Thank you, Speaker, for the opportunity to clarify to, uh, some points made by the member Morali Pili. I would uh, just point out two things. First, I would respectfully disagree first uh, that uh, with his claim that um, just because all the necessary information was provided uh, by PM Lee with regard to this back of the envelope calculations, uh, it would be therefore reasonable for us to take uh, his calculations as self-evident now. Let me be clear, far be it from me to challenge uh, the first wrangler in Cambridge for, for his math, but I believe that he introduced a number of assumptions about expected returns to reserves and GDP growth, uh, and indeed about the amount that would be returned to the reserves based on uh, the way that the government calculates uh, the primary surplus versus uh, the IMF recommendations. So my question is, if he accepts that these assumptions are not necessarily self-evident. Uh, is it reasonable in a debate for us to question these assumptions? My second point uh, builds on this and asks if he would think that the government would be comfortable with making the kind of public policies that they propose just based on uh, the publicly available information that is currently available to uh, the opposition or whether the government would actually require more information that is not made publicly available. Mr. Morali Pillay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Um, sir, in reference to the Honourable Member Associate Professor Lim's uh, first question about whether, on, about the propriety of the assumptions, I mean, this is a point which uh, has been discussed at length. Let me just say that what is relevant for the purposes of the budget is the, is the proportion of the NIRC. You know, uh, even if you were to put aside the assumptions of growth, the fact is that the NIRC, which is reflected in the budget, is, has been relatively stable. And it's now for every dollar that's been spent, 20 cents comes from the NIRC. So from the, from the perspective of anybody proposing to spend more, uh, these facts would be important. Now, I do accept that uh, uh, my honourable friend across the aisle may have a different view about uh, the extent of the information that, uh, that is needed. The, the point I'm making, and I guess we can agree to disagree, I, I, and I said this advisedly, that this actually is a red herring, because all the information needed to calculate revenue is there in terms of the NIRC, in terms of the operating revenue expenditure, which falls more or less within a, a defined uh, variance as well. So for these reasons, I think uh, we, we, sh we, are not ha we are not disadvantaged. Now, as far as the second point is concerned, um, and I, I stand corrected, I think my honourable friend mentioned about the, whether the government uh, would be comfortable I'm sorry that I, I kind of stopped there. If the Honourable uh, Member could just clarify the purport of his question, I'll, I'll, I'll try my best to answer. Mr. Okay. Professor Lim. Yes, my clarification is simple. Uh, the government routinely makes policy. So my question is whether he thinks that uh, the government would be willing to be comparably hamstrung in terms of only making public policy on the basis of all the publicly available information, or they feel that the government can only make policy when there is additional propriety information? Mr. Pillay. Thank you, sir. I think there's a false premise in the, in the question. Um, it's about the government being hamstrung in relation to uh, public information. I mean, the point is this. I mean, as far as uh, the government is concerned, uh, it puts out the, oper the operating revenue, it puts out the proposed operating expenditure, and uh, there are, of course, constitutional requirements to make sure that the budget is balanced. And it's against that backdrop that we can do the analysis as to whether the proposals uh, meet the aspirations uh, or the uh, requirements of Singapore and Singaporeans for now and the future. So I, I, I see this as... Uh, uh, based on a false premise, and therefore I, I will not answer the question. Associate Professor Lim, hopefully it's the last clarification. Much obliged, Speaker, I'll be very uh, brief. Uh, 
So the member Murali has mentioned that uh, the uh, repeatedly that there is a red herring that we have all the information that is required based on the fact that the share of the NIRC is stable. My question to him is simple. Uh, does he think that this stable share has nothing to do with the assumptions about expected returns or uh, GDP growth? Mr. Pillay. Mr. Speaker, sir, as far as the issue of it being stable, that's an empirical fact. So that's something that's being set out um, in the budget statements. And so as far as that contributions are concerned, of course, there is a certain projection and it's made, made uh, by reference to a certain framework. So there is no, I mean, subject to the assumptions inbuilt in the framework, it's not just plucking a figure out of the air. Thank you.